Alright, welcome, 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 welcome. You are into the Unit 2 Cape ITI walkthrough. I would guess that you probably watched the Unit 1 on probably last year. Or you probably just finished watching Unit 1 and you just decided, well, I'm going to continue to watch Unit 2 once I know what I have to do. Either way, you're here and our journey is going to take us through the Unit 2 I. So let me just explain a little bit about what the Unit 2 I is about before we actually start. And I want you to understand that this part of the um, the course or um, KYT is practical. So there's not much write up, even though there are things that you have to write up and they tend to give a lot of problems to some students based on, based on the examiner's report. So I'll be using the same examiner's reports, the same information that I had for unit one, the same examiner's reports have information about unit two. And it tends to be a little clearer about what is expected in unit two. So you get a better chance of what to look for. So our goal is going to be get your write up done in your first few videos and then I'm going to show you how to actually build the website and build a database. So it'll be two videos because I need to show you the two directions I could go, which I would have told you this in unit one, that your solutions must go down the route of either a website or a database. So there'll be the practical aspect of both sides. So in the write up, in the write up, I will be showing you both sides of the both sides of the fence. So I'll give you the right of our website, the right of our database, and some of the things that you have to include to make sure that you get your marks. So Unit 2 IA, um, yeah, it's really not that hard. You just really have to spend time and pay attention to the finer details when you're building the website and building the database to make sure that you cover the marks that they require. And of course, there's always some things that are not said in the syllabus. So that's what the examiner's reports are there for, and my experience in marking them and doing them. So let's go into the unit two. All right, so here we are. I have my blank document set up and the first thing I'm going to have to do is set up the layout of the document. As always, um, this is always should always be the first thing that you do to make sure that you understand what is required, right? So I'm going to have the syllabus on the left hand side here and I'm going to, on the right hand side, I'm going to put the, put the document. So we need to have problem definition. That's not, hold on. I have to format the text one time. To Times New Roman. Even though in, in Unit 2, they don't have any breakdown of the um, APA format and all that, all that drama about double spacing and all that thing, there are literally no marks for the format of your document in Unit 2, which you will see when I show you the syllabus. Like, there is no, there's nothing that says anything about the format. But, just put it in an APA format like how you had it before because I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I can't see them taking away a mark, but I know these these examiners, they they could be a little difficult sometimes. So I put in the Times New Roman 12 and I'm going to just set the format normal text to apply paragraph styles, normal text. Of course I do it in Google Docs because update normal text to match. Right. Alright, so we're going to problem definition. As the first one, then we have analysis of the problem. Then we have identification and justification of IT tools used in the solution. I have a very long heading, but we'll take it. Assessment of the implications of the solution. And then we have implementation of the IT-based solution. Then you have appropriate use of tools, which is a subheading. A P A P P R P R use of tools subheading human computer interface. The reason you have to put these in is because you your IA is not marked um, as a file. Your IA is marked based on the PDF that you submit. So you have to prove everything on the inside. So you have to submit all the screenshots of everything that's working. Appropriate use of a human computer interface and then appropriate 
use of feature tools why is appropriate not spelling correctly right appropriate use of feature tools and then you have working solution and inside the working solution we're gonna like not um we'll, we'll have to break down the working solution based on the type of i that you're doing so i'll say a working solution for um for database no, you wouldn't have to put this in in your IA, right? Just remember, we can. So I, I'm doing both solutions for you: a website-based solution and a database-based um, database database-based. Wow, oh yeah, a database solution. So you won't have to put both of them in, but I'm going to put them in inside this document just to be clear. Um, or I may just do two separate documents. I feel I'll do two, two separate documents just to be clear and I'll switch between both of them. Yeah, I'll switch between both of them. So I'll put this one as working solution for our website. And what I'll do is I'll clone this document after and show the different parts, right? So yeah, let me do that one time. Right, so I made a copy of it. I made a copy of it so that I'll be able to work on them separately. So I'll name this one database. They will have the same information for these first two parts but once we reach down to the um the justification of the tool used yeah all the appropriate tools used in the solution we will have to separate it out so i'll go back to the website one here yeah working solution for website all right so for website what you need to have inside would be they clearly say home page Navigational features, right? Remember, screenshots are your friend in this. Even though you're going to upload the actual website, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna look through it. And if they do look through it, it's because they have to. Navigational features and design and layout. And um, because you're going to have to take all of the research that you did and put it and use it just like the appendix. I put it in an appendix. Yeah. So those are the different parts. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change all of these to head in one. H1. And we're going to page break each one of them. So they all go to their own pages. So let's zoom out a bit so you can see. A page break is control and enter and everybody will get to get onto their own page that way your table of contents will be neat and I, another thing too there are no marks for table of contents and thing in this like the write-up for this is literally I, I don't know like why why that's so much focus on you know it's our whole two marks for formatting and presentation in the unit um, unit 1i and then you know too, it'll just be like, yeah, just type up where you want and get the solution to work. It's very weird. Like they, as I said in unit one, they could easily break this down and not just have it to be 20 marks, but make it to be like um, almost 30, 30 marks at least. And then they could just, you know, divide the mark by two or calculate it, weight it out of 20 or some kind of thing like that. But I really have no idea why the ITI is out of 20 when there's so much granular things that could be done to make it easier to um, to mark, not just to mark, but to give students a fighting chance because some of the mistakes that you might make inside here could cost you a whole mark. And remember this, like a whole mark, that's tough. When it when it eventually going to be marked out of 60, you'll end up the highest, you could get 60, and then after that, you drop down my three marks to 57. So I do agree with it, but what are you gonna do, boy? So I put problem definition there. I'm gonna put table of contents, table of contents here, and then I'll just draw a cover page on top. Cover page. Alright, let's make cover page as a placeholder because I want to hold it. So now I have everything laid out neatly. Yeah, I feel I'll make a copy of this one for the database, but anyhow, yeah. Um. Yeah, so for the database, I'll have to go and do that same thing for, for this part here. But for the database, 
they have working solution for database and on the database they have the breakdown as relevant tables so your yeah, relevant tables relationships and integrity checks security features um most features work on solution that's all right so all they want for the database would be yeah so for the website they want i'm putting table of contents and i'll show you insert table of contents splat out right so for the website they need to have Appropriate use of tools, human computer interface. No, appropriate use of tools. But they wanted to have home page, navigational features, design and layout. On the database, they wanted to have relevant tables, relationship and integrity checks, and security features. But there's so much more, so much more that they're looking for that the syllabus doesn't tell you. So let's, let's look at the syllabus a little bit and see what they have here so they have exactly what i laid out problem definition which is one mark now whereas before in the i in the i before you had um problem definition was two marks in this case the problem definition is one mark and it's the same kind of wooden this one here complete and accurate description of the problem but this one here they would it as Complete description of the problem including description of the background in which the problem occurs So the problem definition in this one is supposed to be a little more background oriented So I'm going to take the same problem definition and just add some background to it when we get to that Analysis of the problem, thorough analysis of facts to identify the causes of the problem, partial analysis of facts If you go back to unit 1, they have Analysis of the problem, thorough analysis, applying at least three appropriate fact-finding techniques to establish the major cause of the problem. So this one here is about the three major fact-finding techniques. But this one here is more thorough analysis of facts to identify the causes of the problem. So it seems to me that here they want you to show a little more analytical skills um, rather than just say, well, there was a graph and the graph said this they want to i don't know i don't know like in my experience normally i just copy copy the um information but we'll get on to each part when we get to the granular parts of the videos right then there's identification justification of it tools this one you're going to list out all the tools that you use to solve the problem so this part is kind of new problem definition and analysis you're basically going to take back everything i had from unit one and adding a few lines or some kind of thing like that but the examiner's report i'll show you all what they say there when we get to that point identification and justification of tools using the solution that's to tell you everything that you use from microsoft Word down to excel to whatever then there's assessment of implications of the solution which is this one is a hard three marks to get because you have to you have to kind of explain a lot you're kind of doing the same justification that you did in unit one but with a little more depth of strategies on how you're going to deal with the issues I come. So your justification in unit one listed some of the problems that would have come up and what you think will be able to fix it. So now um, when you reach assessment of implications of the solution, you have to think a little deeper into okay, what are the problems that the solution could cause? More than just justifying why you chose it as opposed to another one, you have to now critically analyze it and say, hey, this is this is a problem that could happen here. So therefore I'm going to um, do, do this or strategies to address it and that kind of stuff. So that's the BLD. And then the actual implementation of the solution. So we we'll probably break this one down into about three videos. I'll show you all how to take this stuff from unit one, the problem definition and the analysis, and tailor it to what they need in unit two. And then we will tackle identification of the IT tools and an assessment of the implication. And then we will do a video on the database, building the database, and making sure we take off all of these things here and what they ask for in the examiner's report. And, and then I'll do a video on the website, website or database, whichever one will be for you. 
and yeah and then it will be done so this one should be finished in about four videos but the videos might be a long when it comes to the website and the database because i'll have to demonstrate a lot of stuff and some of the things that you don't learn in um in the theory in unit one the, um in unit two sorry you're gonna have to learn to do it here because i don't know what the where the bar is or where the standard is because some teachers say that they don't use they don't let them code in html they use a um a, a program some people even use google sites some people use wordpress all sorts of different things so it's it's very gray when it comes to implementing a website solution the database solution straightforward you use microsoft access and you build a database although there are many features inside microsoft access that you could use that we're not too sure about so i'm really trying to rant about it i just letting you all know that the implementation of this IA is very great. That's why I'm doing these videos so I could help people understand what they say in the examiner's report and how that matches up to what teachers do and how we get to the actual solution. So look out for the next video where we basically take all our problem definition and analysis from the previous um, unit one IA, throw it inside and then add the modifications that are necessary. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it helped you a lot. Remember, there are multiple videos that go through each different part of the IA in detail. So if you want a particular part that you're looking for, you can check the playlist. The playlist link will be in the bottom here. If you use any app, you can check in the app and you will see the playlist for it also to show you all the parts that are necessary. If you're looking for quality information technology and computer science classes at the Cape level, you can check us out, make it simple TT at 1-866-308-879. Or you can check us online at makeitsimplett.com for a slash register and use all of our free resources. But if you're looking for a class that has recordings and explanations for every single thing that you need to do in the whole syllabus, you can check us out.